guys, welcome back to my channel. I am finally here to go over my review of the CoverGirl Simply Asia Skin Perfector Essence. This thing is all over the place and I have not watched a single review on it. <laughs> so I have no idea whether people are liking it. I've read a couple of reviews like on Ulta, but as far as all of the comparison videos, all of the review videos, I have made myself not watch them. It's not like they would skew my thoughts on it because I definitely have my thoughts on it, but I just didn't, I didn't even wanna bring it into my head. So this is a clean slate review and comparison of the CoverGirl Essence with not only the Chanel water tint, which is what I see everybody comparing it to, and rightfully so, it's basically the same type of product with pigment beads encased in skincare type water to produce a tint slash foundation. So definitely worth comparing, so I do, but I also put it up against my Jane Iredell Hydra Pure, which I have not seen a comparison of these two yet. And this is, again, the same thing, pigment beads encased in skincare. So I have done demos of all three of these, and then I will come back at the very end and tell you how I feel like they stacked up against each other, if I feel like the CoverGirl is worth it, especially if you already have one of these other ones, and if you don't have these other ones, whether I think it's worth it. So let's go ahead and jump into the demos, starting off with Jane Ardell Hydra Pure. I really feel like this product needs no introduction, <laughs> but in case you're new or you have missed my umpteen kajillion videos on this product. I do want to use it again, especially since it is one of the main ones I'm comparing the CoverGirl to. So this is the Jane Ardell Hydro Pure Tinted Serum. I am in the shade number medium four. This is $58 before the discount code that I always have for Jane Ardell. And it's one fluid ounce and it comes in eight shades. So my favorite way to apply this is with my fingers. So I just put the product in my fingers and I'm gonna apply it like I do a regular tinted moisturizer. This is me with no tint on the face. I'm using an SPF that is non-tinted. So again, I'm just gonna apply it like I do a regular moisturizer. And this is how I apply all of the products that are similar to this. It's how I'm gonna apply the CoverGirl. It's how I apply the Chanel. Anything that has these like pigment beads suspended in skincare. This is how I find that it works best applied on me. This has olive squalane, it has CoQ10, it has willow bark extract, which is good for soothing. It has oat kernel extract, which is also good for soothing. It has glycerin high up on the ingredient list, which is very hydrating. So this is a hydrating, soothing product. So this is just with like a first layer. Now, typically I love layering this with a powder foundation, specifically the Jane Ardell Pure Pressed. However, I am only using a regular powder during this testing in comparison. So if I feel like I have any other kind of redness peeking through, which obviously I do, with such a sheer product like this, I'll go back in and just kind of tap it on that area. And again, I'm not gonna get still more than light coverage. This is not like a buildable to medium type of product. This is the skin. See, you can definitely still see my redness and that's okay. Cause when I reach for a product like this, I am not seeking full coverage. I'm really not even seeking medium coverage. I'm looking for hydration and plumpness. So I'm gonna finish off the makeup again just using a regular loose powder and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is with just a loose powder and everything else with the Jane Iredell Hydra Pure. Definitely check my channel for other videos I've done on this. I've done a full review. I've used it in so many favorites. It is a love of mine. <laughs> So it will be interesting to see how the CoverGirl stacks up. Today, I am gonna be trying out the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence, which is kind of the whole point of this video, is to see how the other products that are very much like this in formula stack up against it, or really how this stacks up against them since I've had them longer. 
I got the shade number 30 light medium. There are eight shades in this. It is $21.49 on Ulta's website. You could probably get it a little bit cheaper at Walmart if it's even available. When I first started looking at this, I could really only find it on Ulta. I'm sure it's expanded by now. This one has a little bit of a shorter ingredient list and the majority of what is in this are going to be emollients and humectants, making it a very moisturizing formula. However, they tout on marketing that their main, like, Heavy hitters are 0.5% Bacuchiol, which some people have said is nature's alternative to retinol. It's an antioxidant. And I'm not saying it's not great and it doesn't work, but for me, I would not replace my retinol with it. But it is a good antioxidant. So there is 0.5% Bacuchiol. It also touts it having tranexamic acid, which is a brightening ingredient. It does have that. However, it's basically the last ingredient before iron oxides. I have not used this yet. However, I have kind of pumped it out onto my hand to see how the, the shade was going to be. And the consistency is a lot runnier than the Jane Iredell. It is also one fluid ounce despite the different size and bottles. So this is it. See how it's running down my hand? It does say in the how to use to make sure you warm it up on your hands before applying, and then you can apply it with a brush or your hands. It says you can use this by itself or as a primer for underneath other foundations to help with hydration and moisture. It is definitely runnier. I can just tell by how it feels on my hands. And I'm gonna apply it just like I did the Jane Ardell. I feel like it's spreading further than the Jane, probably because it is runnier and has a thinner consistency. Lucy, what are you doing, buddy? Hi. <laughs> I can always kind of gauge a product like this level of coverage by how it works on my lips because I do have pretty pigmented lips. So if I take the product over that and see how much it covers it up, I can definitely see that there is coverage in this a little less than the Jane Ardell because I have about the same amount of redness today as I had when I used that for the demo's purposes, but more is coming through. So let's see if we can kind of tap it in like we did the Jane and get just a little bit more coverage. Not getting too much more, but maybe like a very, very tiny amount. It does feel hydrating. This is how it looks. So definitely like a luminous finish, but not overly. I see some spots that still need a little bit of, you need to really make sure you rub this in because it can get a little streaky I'm seeing. That's it. So right off the bat, little less coverage than Jane Iredell, about the same type of finish and definitely runnier in texture. So I'll finish up my makeup and see how it looks under everything else. Okay, so this is with all of my makeup finished. I use the same powder and bronzer as I did with the Jane Iredell. And the only thing that I noticed while applying the rest of my makeup was a little bit of patchiness on my nose that I had to work to blend out a little bit. Not a huge deal at all. And I did go back and I almost said have to go back. I did not have to do this, but I felt like I needed to go back in not once, but twice with a hydration spray, my palmist, because I was just feeling kind of tight and dry, despite the fact that it has so many moisturizing ingredients. So I don't know if it's what my skin is like today, if it's acting up for some reason and being a little extra dry, or if it's a product itself. But other than that, it's perfectly fine. It worked very similarly to the Jane. I will see how it wears throughout the day. And of course I will catch up at the end of the video for all of that. But this is the CoverGirl Simply Aegis Skin Perfector Essence. Skin Perfector? Yeah, Skin Perfector Essence. <laughs> Talking about the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint, doing a demo, seeing how it compares. This one also comes in eight shades. It is also one ounce, but it is by far the most expensive. It is $70. Does come with a little brush. That makes a bit of a difference, but I have never used it. It was a little too little for me. 
So this claims to be a light to medium foundation with a gel texture. It is comprised of 75% water. It does have a couple of skincare ingredients in it as well. And they push the tamarind seed extract, which helps with moisture. And they say helps the foundation be more comfortable and refreshing on the skin. There's also glycerin high up on the ingredient list. I feel like that is something that is constant within all of these products, which helps with the moisture that comes as a result with using these. And the only really standout difference in the ingredient list with this is there are less kind of what you would call skincare ingredients and there is fragrance listed. So out of all of the three, this one is the only one that has added fragrance in it. I am in the shade medium. And while it says to use the brush that it comes with, I say I never use that. I feel like I tried it when I first got it and I was, I tried it for like maybe two seconds and was like, absolutely not. This is not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna use my hands like I have with all the rest. The pigment beads in this actually appear smaller when I pump out the product than they do in the other two. It is most similar to the CoverGirl as far as the size of the pigment beads and the formula itself, the consistency. It is much thinner than the Jane, but more in line with the CoverGirl. So I do have redness right now because I just rubbed my face, but for the beginning of the application, I had less redness than I have had with the other two. My skin just seems to be calmer this morning. So it honestly is a very sheer to light coverage product. It did give a little bit of coverage on my lips, which tells me there is some coverage there. I'm gonna take one more pump and again, pat it on my cheeks like I have the other to see how that works. This is, you can see just that second layer, how much hydration it added to the skin. And as far as patting it on, it blends itself out doing that better than the other two, but it also didn't give a ton more coverage. That's okay. That's not what I look for in these products. This is the Chanel on the skin. Definitely hydrating, gives a very kind of glossy finish. So I'll finish up my makeup and we'll see how it looks underneath everything else. Okay, so this is the Chanel Water Fresh Tint with all of the basically same makeup that I've been using for the other two applied on top. And while I really like how hydrated it looks, the only main difference that I really could tell myself while applying the rest of my makeup was that I do feel like this is probably the most sheer coverage out of all of them while still maintaining some semblance of coverage. But that's the main difference. We'll see how it wears throughout the day. And now on to my final thoughts. Lots of information going through my head right now. And I feel like I gave a little bit of information in the demos as well. I do have lots of notes that were taken, how I think these compare. But first, let's start out with the one that I feel like matters the most because it's the first thing we look at when we are going to purchase a product, and that is the price. So the price breakdown of these three products is as follows per gram. The Jane Iredell is $58 retail, which comes out to be $1.93 per gram. But don't forget the 20% off code that I have with Harman House, it's good all the time for Jane Ardell, which brings the product down to a total of $46.40 .40 retail, $1.54 per gram. The CoverGirl, I could only find in two to three places. Ulta, I think, was the first one that got it out of anybody, and that's $21.49 retail. These are all one ounce which comes out to 71 cents a gram. But then I did see it on Amazon and Walmart for I think it was $18.37, which comes out to 61 cents per gram. And finally, the Chanel is $70 retail, which comes out to obviously the most expensive at $2.33 a gram. Let's talk about the actual formulation. 
They all tout to have skincare ingredients in them. They all claim to be hydrating and moisturizing. And to be fair, all of them have glycerin in the ingredients list. So you can definitely say that they are all going to be some level of hydrating. The Chanel is 75% water. The CoverGirl says it's 71% water. And the Jane does not specify what percentage of water because really, I feel like it's more of a gel than a water. It's definitely the thickest consistency out of all of them. And the CoverGirl and the Chanel are, are more similar with a much thinner watery texture. As far as the skincare that is included in all of them, to me, looking at the ingredients list, Jane has the most amount of skincare ingredients in the inky list. Chanel really only touts the tamarind seed extract and it also includes fragrance. So while fragrance doesn't irritate my skin specifically, I can see a lot of people who do have irritation to fragrance finding that that kind of takes the skincare benefits away because it's gonna irritate their skin. And then the CoverGirl really markets itself on the Bakuchiol. It does also have tranexamic acid in it, but as I mentioned in the demo, it's much farther down on the ingredients list, so I don't know how much benefit you're gonna get from that. And a simple Google search reveals that the ideal percentage of Bakuchiol in a product to see results is 0.5% to 2%. So this is on the lowest side of that range at only 0.5%. All of that to say is that I don't rely on my foundation or base products or skin tints to provide my skincare needs. It doesn't hurt that the skincare ingredients are in there. Again, a lot of them can help with hydration, moisture, the overall finish of the product, but I'm not looking at that to give me my skincare needs. I look to my skincare to do that. So. I'm not necessarily putting it in the cons list that there's only 0.5% of Bakuchiol, but people who really truly look to their makeup to provide their skincare might want to look into percentages more. As far as shade range goes, all three of them have eight shades available. They are a lighter coverage product. And when you are looking at sheer to light coverage products, one shade can really span probably sometimes even like four skin tones underneath that one shade. So I feel like eight shades is very normal considering all three of them have eight shades for a product like this. Now let's talk about application. The easiest one to apply, meaning it took very little blending in, kind of did all of the work itself, was the Chanel. And I think maybe that has to do with the fact that it is in my opinion, the least amount of coverage of all of them, but it really does take no effort to blend it into the skin. It doesn't leave any streak marks behind. There's no excessive, you know, going back and making sure it's all blended. The Jane Iredell is not hard for me to blend in. Maybe that's because it's the one that I've been using the longest out of all three of them. In the demo, I didn't blend it in the best over my eyebrows. And to be fair, a lot of the times when I use products like these, I will do it before I apply my eyebrows. But for the sake of the video, I put my brows on first and I have to be very careful about going around them. And I just wasn't that careful with the Jane. So that was user error, not necessarily the formula's fault. But other than that, I have no issues with the Jane. It, the CoverGirl was definitely the hardest for me, not hardest, let me reword that. The CoverGirl took the longest for me to blend into my skin and get the desired result, which I think is the desired result we all want, no streaks <laughs> and evenly blended. I had to go back quite a bit in my mirror and look up close to make sure that it was blended in. And even then I still had an area right here that I didn't catch. It was streaky. And when I went back and looked at my makeup all throughout the day, I noticed some areas around my jawline, especially where it was just not blended in well. I just didn't look at it enough and I had already looked at it a lot. <laughs> so definitely takes the longest. And from the few negative reviews I did see on Ulta, that was one of them was that it was very streaky and it wasn't easy to apply. So it definitely gets the third place in application. And as far as coverage, I have them in places as well. The Jane Iredell gives me the most coverage out of all three of them. The CoverGirl comes in second and the Chanel is last or third with the least amount of coverage. So if you are just comparing these two because the consistency is very, very similar, 
the coverage is a little bit better with the CoverGirl than the Chanel. I did not have any visible dry patches while testing any of these, so I can't speak on how the CoverGirl works on dry patches. I know the other two work fine. I did have to spray my face fairly quickly with a CoverGirl, and I mentioned that in the demo that it felt a little drying on my face, but it wasn't uncomfortable, and I don't feel like it got drier throughout the day. So my final thoughts on this are... I mean, it's almost $22 for a drugstore foundation, and I know that seems to be par for the course lately on how expensive things are getting at the drugstore, but I wouldn't expect it to be that expensive. However, it still comes in as the cheapest of all the three that I'm talking about. If you don't have any of these and are wanting to try a product like this, definitely worth giving a try. I personally, other than the streaks, and, you know, making sure that I applied it and feeling a tad bit dry with it. I've had no issues with it. It wears nice. It has the perfect amount of coverage for a product like this, in my opinion. And it's worth trying out if you've been interested in something like this. If you have one of these or both of these, it is absolutely not a necessity to buy the CoverGirl. It is just too redundant, especially with this one in my case and not needed. It's $22 that could be spent elsewhere. And that, again, is if you have one or both. So even if you just have the Jane, you don't need the CoverGirl. Even if you just have the Chanel, you don't need the CoverGirl. While I do like it, my very favorite out of all of them is still my Jane Ardell Hydro Pure. I know y'all are so surprised. And I feel like even though I have it in my collection now, I will still reach for the other two before I reach for the CoverGirl. So hopefully this was helpful in a decision in entertainment value <laughs> in seeing how it compares to two other products that I have and adore in my collection. So I'll have everything listed and linked down below per usual. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.